Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Hope you're having a great day today. In this video, we're going to be talking about innovation versus tradition. Now, for regular viewers of the channel, you will, of course, recognize both of these guitars. On one hand, we have the Relish Mary 1, and this one represents innovation. Very, very cool guitar, semi hollow body with an aluminum subframe that kind of holds all the pieces together, and of course, a Gibson Les Paul Standard. This one represents tradition as, you know, the mahogany and maple combination, which is, you know, some 70 years old. So we've got some innovation versus tradition. Let's jump right in. Now beyond just looking at the features of each guitar, we've got to talk a little bit about tone wood. Now what I'm going to do is put the exact same pickups in both guitars and we're going to do a little bit of a playing comparison. So we're going to keep the amp settings the same, the EQ the same, everything's the same, same pickup set. The only difference is the Relish is a hollow body aluminum hybrid and of course the Les Paul is mahogany and maple and we're going to see if that makes a difference. So the pickup set I've decided to put in both guitars are the classic Seymour Duncan Alnico 2s, favored by players like Slash. They give you a really nice, full but articulate sound, so I think they're going to sound great in both guitars. Here we go. Now, of course, changing pickups on the Relish Mary 1 could not be easier, and that's one of the main ways that this guitar has massive innovations. So here we go. Take the back off. It's held on with magnets, and the pickups themselves are held on with magnets as well. We'll just pull this set out and check out our Seymour Duncans. So hopefully the camera may grab that. Seymour Duncan Alnico 2s. This is the neck. So let's pop that in there. Boom, and the bridge. Yep, that's right. Done. So now I've got Seymour Duncan Alnico 2s in the Relish, and we're ready to rock. Now, of course, changing pickups on a traditional instrument is much more work. And for somebody who works slowly like me, it's at least a couple hours. Um, but it was a great excuse to get rid of the stock Burst Bucker Pros, which I didn't particularly like. And, uh, you know, gave me an excuse to go to a set that I know I'm going to like. So I went with the same aesthetics. So the zebra coils, I think they look awesome, give slightly vintage look to a modern instrument. So the looks are the same, uh, but the Burst Bucker Pros are gone and the Alnico 2s are in. So ignoring all the differences between the guitars, the wood types, the construction, all this stuff, we're going to see how close they sound if you just use the same set of pickups. Now we've got to do a blind test, so we're going to do quick like 10 second clips here. Uh, neck, middle, bridge, blind test, here we go. So here are the results for the neck pickup. Guitar number one was the Les Paul and guitar number two was the Relish. Okay, here are the results. Guitar number one was the Relish, guitar number two was the Les Paul. And the results for our bridge test here were Les Paul and Relish. All right, now let's do a clip where you guys can actually see the guitars being played. We're gonna add a touch of overdrive. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
finally, let's throw both guitars in a mix, see how they sit there, and then we'll talk about final thoughts and tones. Now that we've listened to these guitars in a few different contexts, it's time to talk about the tone. Now, considering how radically different these guitars are constructed in pretty much every single way, uh, I thought using the same pickups in both brought them surprisingly close together. So that was interesting, and we'll talk about some of the differences, you know, the main differences between these guitars. But yeah, I thought using the same pickups was surprisingly close, and maybe if you're listening through a phone or something like that, you might not even notice the difference. Um, but through good studio monitors or headphones, the differences were there. The Les Paul, you know, was true to a Les Paul. I thought it was warmer with slightly slower attack on the notes. And with the Relish, it was overall brighter with faster attack. So if that's true, what are the main contributing factors for this change in tone? I've always said the pickups make up like the majority of the tone of a guitar and all the other contributing factors kind of shade in around the pickups, but the pickups are the dominating factor. So let's ignore the wood for now and just talk about some of these other features that could make up the tonal difference. Number one is the neck joint. We've got a glue in joint versus bolt on. Number two is bridge type. We've got strings through the body versus strings on top of the body. Number three is scale length, 24 and three quarter versus 25 and a half. And number four is pickup location. On the Relish, we've got two full octaves or 24 frets versus 22 frets on the Les Paul. So the pickups are actually in a different location. So those are all the non-tone wood related differences between these two guitars. Uh, is it enough to account for the tonal differences? I think it is. The different bridge types, for sure. The different scale lengths, for sure. The different uh, pickup locations, absolutely. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these guitars are different in nearly every way, which is why I really wanted to put the same set of pickups in and just see how close they would sound. So getting onto the woods and construction, we've got maple and bamboo versus mahogany and rosewood. Uh, and of course, mahogany and maple versus aluminum frame. Um, you know, surprisingly, the weights are about the same. Uh, so that's interesting. But yeah, very, very different in every single way. Now, more specifically in relation to the Relish, the quick pickup swapping is amazing. Going from, you know, a low output humbucker to a high output humbucker to a P90 size humbucker or even a single coil sized humbucker. 
uh, in the blink of an eye is super useful for anybody who records, uh, anybody who does sessions that just wants to show up with one guitar, um, you know, recording one track to the other, doing gigs with different genres. Um, and the main advantage is you get to use the same guitar. So, you know, the neck feels the same, the fret, the action, the nut width, all the same, just changing the tones. Whereas if you're changing guitars, sometimes the nut width will be different, the neck profiles will be different, the radius on the fingerboard will be different, and you've got to quickly kind of like relearn that. And I know, you know, for me jumping between a Strat and a Les Paul, um, you know, I it takes a few minutes to kind of get into it. And the main advantage here is you could get those tones, but with the exact same playing experience. So all that to say is we need innovation and we need tradition working together. One without the other just doesn't work. If you stopped innovating in the early 50s, all you had was Les Pauls without humbuckers and you know the early tellies maybe, uh, would we have John Petrucci? Would we have Steve Vai? You know, all those kind of players. Uh, we're much richer for having, you know, these innovations that come along, you know, even in the, the late 50s, like the Jazz Master, um, you know, some of the Flying Vs that were like crazy, the early 60s SGs. Every innovation kind of came at, you know, a little bit of a cost. People didn't love them or adopt them right away, but now we're so much richer for them. Thanks so much for watching you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video featuring two amazing guitars. Check out the t-shirt store and the tab store in the video description below on your way out. Other than that, have a fantastic week. We'll see you next time with a new video.